Let's talk about alphabets, magical alphabets, how they're used in magic, and exactly how they work from a psychomagical perspective. Okay, so first let's talk about reading and writing. So when we write something, what are we actually doing? We're moving a pen or pencil or stylus or what have you on a piece of paper because some people still write on paper. <laughs> um, and this even applies when you type and stuff. You are using physical movements to create little symbols or to hit the little buttons for little symbols when you type. And, you know, different places have different alphabets and stuff. And when we look at those symbols, which is the different graphemes, which is the individual letters, our brain looks at that translates it to the from the connections in here to what it's supposed to sound like and then as you go with the whole word it puts that all together and gives you a word right so really letters same and numbers and such are symbols that our brain decodes now you know for most of us where you know we know how to read and we know how to write and it's almost automatic right so when we read something like try try this right Go grab a page of a book somewhere or something that has writing on it and just try to put your eyes over the page without your brain reading anything. It's really, really difficult because your brain will just pick up on something and scream the word at you. It's really difficult because of the way that your brain just instantly decodes stuff. So now let's talk about how that works in magic, right? So you've seen, you've probably seen different things such as Theban script. That's a really famous kind of um, alphabet that some people use on their on their spells and different things like that. Even runes and things, you can actually pronounce those and say those runes out loud. Even other alphabets from like the Hebrew alphabet or whatever. You know, something out of the norm, out of like, you know, for example, if you write in like regular English and stuff, then when you look at something like Hebrew or even like Russian or Theban script or runes or things like that, your brain's like, hold on a second, what is that? Right? So it takes a minute to think about it and a minute to decode it. So basically, let's get down to the nitty gritty, right? When you use a different alphabet in your spell work, whether you are you know, putting it on a sigil or maybe putting a special like wordings or something onto a ritual object such as a knife or a staff or a wand or what have you, it's really effective to use a different alphabet than the one that you are used to. And here's why. It's the same thing with like sigils. So sigils, we take a, you know, what we want, boil it down to a phrase of intent, boil it down to non-repeating letters, and play with those to make a sigil, either out of artistic writing or a, um, what is it, the rose cross method or using planetary squares. Those are three different methods. You could also use like um, divinatory methods of divining sigils and stuff, but that's not exactly applicable here, but that is another way to make sigils. Anyway, um, and the first three ways that I talked about are ways that <coughs> you are instructed to use um, to make sigils in both my Handy Sigil Magic class and the Handy Sigil Magic book and my Magical Movement book for making your own sigils. So just kind of want to make a little shameless plug there. But anyway, when we use a different alphabet, it's the same as using a sigil. Your subconscious knows what it is because you took that time to figure out, okay, this is the phrase I want, then I'm going to put it in this different alphabet, and then I'm going to write it down, right? So it's not automatic English. You look at those symbols, and because it takes your brain extra time and extra effort, if you were to sit there and decode it, like, what's it, you know, what does that mean? What did I write? The point is, when you say, what does that mean? What did I write? You're using your conscious mind, right? You're using your logical brain. You're trying to decode it. That's not what we want here. We want subconscious action, subconscious workings. We want your subconscious mind on fire in magic, right? So when you have something like a rune script or what have you on there, your conscious mind glosses over it. <clears throat> your subconscious mind is like, yo, that's what it is. That's what, that's the intention. That's what the energy is going to go towards. So it's a way of skipping your conscious mind and activating your subconscious mind. Thank you for the interruption, Pixie. Um, as you guys know, I always have interruptions here. But because what we are trying to do in magic and learn about this a lot in magical theater, my first book, the blue one up there, um, 
is we are trying to activate the subconscious mind. We are trying to circumvent the conscious, get into the subconscious, because the subconscious is, is the connector and the antenna either to the different archetypes and other things like that, if you believe in a psychological model, or the energetic universe and the extrasensory perceptions and the ability to touch that fabric and change something in accordance with will, right? So we are trying to tap into that subconscious. So like, if you guys ever like commission a spell work from me, which I do, um, inquire about that in the email, you can check down below or at the end of this video for all that stuff. Um, you'll notice that when I make a sigil, because I make a custom sigil for every working that I do, I have writing around it. And that is not in, it's not English letters. So subconscious, it triggers the intent when I work with it. And subconscious, it triggers the intent when you see it, because you can't really decode it. I can decode it. It takes a little bit longer than decoding regular English, but I actually took the um, one of the alphabets from The Legend of Zelda. I learned how to write it. I learned how to read it. And I journaled with it since 2008. So I can write it just as fast as English. Reading it, on the other hand, is like half speed of my regular reading speed. But the point is, that slowdown, that little bit of decoding, that takes me to the subconscious, activates my subconscious, and therefore jump starts the energy for spell work. So if you want to do the same kind of thing with your workings. When you make a sigil and you boil down that intent to like a power word or something, figure out a different alphabet, maybe practice with it, and then write that intent or that power word, right, around the sigil in that different lettering because it's not activating your conscious, your conscious mind like it would if it was just regular letters and numbers that you read every day. So we are taking the, we're taking the route from what we write and what we see directly to the subconscious. There's plenty of different alphabets out there that you can use. You can even just use an alphabet that you can Google up or you can make one up yourself. The point is, it's just not something you see and use every single day. It's something that's out of the norm and makes it a little bit more difficult because it's just activating your subconscious mind. So you can do this with like rune scripts. You can put it on objects like wands or staffs or or your ritual knives or athames or what have you, and you can program specific energies and specific intents into those objects or your sigils or whatever workings that you make with these different alphabets. So that's effectively what makes them effective. Is that a pun? If so, pun intended. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this. You can always connect with me on my Facebook group. Check me out on Patreon if you like what I'm doing here. You know, you can email me any questions, comments, complaints, concerns, issues, or if you want to request a video, you can comment that stuff down below too. And if you want me to work magic for you, definitely inquire with me through my email. Good hunting. Thanks for watching my video. So if you want to check out my playlists, I have, among others, the Simon Necronomicon, the Tree of Life, General Magic, Tulpamancy, a playlist on my books, the Elements, Stones, the Theories That Govern Magic, and the Gods and Goddesses of Mesopotamia. If you want to check out my books on Amazon, I have Creating Consciousness, Magical Mechanics, Magical Theater, Handy Sigil Magic, Magical Movement, which is an update and expansion upon Handy Sigil Magic, Magical Mastery, which is a combination masterwork of Magical Theater and Magical Mechanics, and The Guide to the Spheres and Beyond. You can also find me on Facebook at MagicologyYT. You can email me at priestofthenecro at gmail.com, and you can even check out my Instagram, which is Magicology. And good hunting.